This week on Talking Pictures with Neil Rosen Talks Oscars, the Academy Award nominations are out and we're making predictions. We'll tell you which Best Picture nominees have what it takes to go the distance. We'll let you know if there are any actors and actresses who have the coveted gold statuette all but locked up. Plus, we've got the word on what director is out in front with the best chance of winning. We've got all that and many more Oscar picks and thoughts coming up. The Academy Awards are on Sunday night, March 27th, and along with my panel of experts, we're making predictions. I'm Neil Rosen, and I'm joined by Perry Nemiroff from Collider. How you doing there, Perry? I am it, so happy to be back. I am so happy to have you here in the studio. Uh, Bill McCuddy is here from Gold Derby. Hey, hey Neil. Bill. We're, we're as, I'm as thrilled as you are. <laughs> and our old friend Lisa Rossman from Signs and Sirens is here. Hi, Neil. Let's talk about the disaster that will be the Oscars. Well, I don't know. Let's see. But let's start <laughs> off with Best Supporting Actor. Let's take a quick look at the nominees in that category. Shouldn't be a problem. I've been married to your granny for 50 years. I've never understood a word you said. You are marvelous, Rose. We were married Sunday. There's no such thing as the Danny Thomas show. It's called Make Room for Daddy. Don't tell me comedy. What little lady made these? I did, sir. <laughs> All right, best supporting actor, Perry. Who do you want to win? Who do you think will win? I feel like I win no matter what, because my who will win and who I want to win is the same person. It's Cody Smith McPhee for The Power of the Dog, and he's been my front runner all along. I think he's been positioned that way, and I don't think he's wavering at all whatsoever right now, especially when you consider the fact that two of his uh, co-casts are nominated in other categories, and I got a feeling they're not going to win their reward, so I feel like all the support is going to be swung in his direction. Lisa? I actually love that performance, but I don't agree with you. I think it'll be Troy Kotzer. Um, there's so much love and anguish and wit in that performance from Coda, and it also showcases the theatricality of ASL in a way that's basically never been seen on screen like that. Well, that's not true. Never is a, heart, is a lot, but it's... He really captures something amazing in that performance. Everything you both say is correct, and yet I want J.K. Simmons to win. I want the only bone thrown to Aaron Sorkin that night to be for the funniest performer in Being the Ricardos. That isn't going to win anything else that night, so including Nicole win? Kidman. So this is the guy I want to win, J.K. Simmons. But who do you think, do you think he is going to win? Uh, I probably have to agree with Perry that the power of the dog is going to begin early in the evening and it's going to wag the tail all night long. Okay. Well, I'm with you, Lisa. The person that I want to win is Troy Couture. I mean, not only is the, he the first male deaf actor to ex actually get a, you know, an Oscar nomination, the guy is terrific. He's funny. He's moving. I would love for him to win. And he has a shot at winning. But if I had to bet on it, I think that uh, Perry and, uh, and Bill are right. I think that Cody Smith McPhee is going to get caught up in a sweep of the power of the dog. I don't really think that the character is as interesting or as captivating as Troy Couture. You know, I think it's an okay performance, but uh, I think that's, uh, that's where it's going to go. Let's take a look at the nominees for Best Supporting Actress. Are you thinking about the Yates? I bet you know it by heart in Italian. Uh. If they did get there, they did get to the moon. It's not what it says here. God doesn't like it. I wonder why it was stars she gave us. Why not diamonds? Why not hearts? That's all right, Richard. That's all right. I don't need your thank you. Unlike you, I don't need the world to tell me I'm great. Lisa, who do you want to win? Who do you think is going to win? Ariana DeBose is going to win it, and I'm perfectly happy with that. She's wonderful. I mean, West Side Story has some extraordinary performances outside of Ansel's, um, and I think Hollywood is going to love the parallel structure of giving another Oscar to the role that won Rita Moreno that groundbreaking Oscar so many years before. I yep. hate to agree, but Ariana DeBose looks like the lock here of the evening because she's the ingenue, she's in a remake, she's doing something that's been done before but in a new way. Uh, this is the early thing that they're going to do for Steven Spielberg if he gets nothing else that night. So I think she's the should. But I will say that I think if the power of the dog can do what we're talking about, don't count out Kristen Dunst yeah. here. She could really be the upset. Totally. A very boring performance, I thought, from Kristen Dunst. But Whoa! Oh. Boring! What? I did. Boring! But, all right, anyway, who, who do you it's who? a different tone and a different pace. Yeah, movie. that's why it stands out from the codas in the West Side. Story. Who do you want? 
Who do you, I who want do you Ariana DeBose to win, and I think she's going to win. I think Dunst could maybe be the one to steal it, but again, Not according to him, which she apparently she needed to sing and dance a little more in The Power of the no, Dog. She, <laughs> Jazz she hands would have really helped that performance. She is excellent <laughs> in that movie, and she, with Jesse Plemons, helps set the foundation for everything else that takes place in that. They are instrumental to that movie. It is just different from some of the other things that are nominated. I think if, there, if there's a very slight chance that Hollywood might love the idea of a husband-wife couple win and that Jesse and uh, Kirsten could win but I still I have a Ariana feeling about it's it. It's a prom. It's a, it's definitely a prom. Okay. So it's yeah. like you're right. It, it's like uh, date night for them and the the other couple <laughs> the other <laughs> couple we have to talk about is Penelope uh, Cruz and Javier Bardem. If they won, that would be the first Did time. Did you yeah. reference prom on purpose? Yeah. She's great. Um, she steals the movie. I love the movie, and um, you know people love her. And uh, she—it is the best performance in the category. Let's move on to best actress, and let's take a look. And I think it's very important that we, as mom and dads, love through anything, and that's the way with Jesus, you know. Children are a crushing responsibility. Happy birthday. <laughs> You think we're saying Ricky's stupid? I think you're saying the audience is. And that's something for which they won't soon forgive you. You charge for these lessons? A ton. Why would you think I got delayed by someone? Oh, come on, come on. Bill, who do you want to win in this category? Who do you think is going to win in Boy, this category? Boy, this is the big shocker of the night because no one expected Kristen Stewart to sneak in for Spencer. She hasn't won anything else, and yet now she's got that kind of underdog thing going for her. She might actually pull this off, but who do I want to win? Penelope Cruz for Parallel Mothers. As I said, she and Javier Bardem are both nominated. They could be the king and queen of the prom, and I would love for her to win for this. Lisa? I loved Penelope Cruz's performance. I thought it was one of the stunners of the year, but I think Olivia Coleman will win and I have to say I'm so grateful for this performance and this film the ambivalence around motherhood the reality that not all women should or want to have kids is rarely explored cinematically and I'm grateful that it was someone like Olivia Coleman who has so much range to be the one who tackled it that said uh, I actually do want her to win as much as if I love Penelope as they say I have a feeling this one is going to Nicole Kidman right now. Whoa! Whoa. I never wavered on Kristen Stewart for a minute. I don't care if she didn't get See other See what I mean about how wide open it is? She's always been at the top of my list, and if I could pick who won this award, I would definitely pick her. I feel like that whole movie should have gotten nominated for more things, but literally everybody's exceptional work would have crumbled unless she was the one to pull it all together. She is exceptional in that and should be honored. She, this is the toughest category of the evening, as we said. Who do I want to win? I'd like Jessica Chastain to win. <laughs> this person is the living embodiment of Tammy Faye. She, she prepared like seven years for this role. Watching her is like amazing. Yeah, she's actually really wonderful. And if she wasn't in there, the other person that I would want to win would have been Penelope Cruz because um, Pedro Almodovar did for her what he did for um, you know Antonio Banderas in Pain and Glory. It's her best performance in, in her career. The movie is phenomenal, but I think that Olivia Coleman is going to win, and I'm not happy with that at I all. Love um, that I think the performance is overrated. What? Um, wow. I, 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 Again, I really do. Overrated. You know? um, and they nominated the woman who played her younger, so that means they really, yes, really probably. like the movie. They also really like Maggie Gyllenhaal, which I'm going to tell you about in the, when we get finally to uh, the That's screenplays, director, yeah. but I'm telling you, uh, this could happen. This could be the upset of the night. I think it's going to be Olivia Coleman, although um, the movie makes no sense to me, and I think it's an overrated film as well. Makes but no that's sense gonna, to you? Yeah, oh, that, that, that ending is just insane, but I'm not going to do any spoilers. Let's take a look at who's up for best actor. I was chased to this country, Lucy! Believe me, you checked the wrong box. Oh, do pardon me. <laughs> They're just as real as possible. This is the life of bo 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 This is the life of bo 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 That's your dangerous face. Make some dangerous noises. <laughs> there you go. That's your dangerous face. That's, okay, don't do that for the people. Say, from whence you owe this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heat you stop our way with such prophetic greeting. Perry, talk to me. Want and who will win? 
I feel conflicted about this because I think Will Smith is going to win, and I'm not going to be sad if he wins. Nope. I kind of want him to win. I just want Andrew Garfield to win more because Tick, Tick, Boom was one of my favorite movies of last year. I think it was my number three. And his performance in it, it's not that I didn't know what Andrew Garfield was capable of, but those that's a skill set that is just on another level above and beyond, and he should get the win for that, in my opinion. Well, here's the thing. I think Will Smith is going to win, and I want Will Smith to win because he's been around forever. He's been nominated twice before. This is his year. This is his moment. It's a great performance. If he wasn't in the category, I'm with you. Andrew Garfield, who I was never a really big fan of, blew me away. He is Jonathan Larson in this particular thing, and he learned how to sing for this. He never sang publicly before. He's great. But no, I want Will, and I think it's going to be Will. Lisa? I think this is a good moment to say that 2021 had amazing movies. You know, other years have disappointed me. I love every performance in almost all of these categories, and I agree that Will Smith is terrific, but I actually think Benedict Cumberbatch is going to take this partly because I think, really? I think yeah. Power of the Dog has some real good wind on its back this year. And I have to say, conservative Hollywood loves to reward a straight actor for playing queer. They never get over that one. And I think that this this is a real pressure cooker of a performance. And I think he's going to get a lot of, I think he's going to get rewarded for it. Personally, I like, I, I love Will Smith's performance. I love everyone's performance in this category. But for me, it's Denzel who should actually take it. This is a career topping performance to me. Very rarely do actors his age play Macbeth. And it really, really works. I think only now at this age, could he have pulled off the vulnerabilities and the panic that's necessary for this role? And it's it's Denzel like we've never seen him before on screen. Look, at Gold Derby, we like, uh, most people like Benedict Cumberbatch to win this night. And as we said earlier, if there is any kind of a big sweep, he will certainly be swept up in it. But in a, in a, in a just world, I think it's got to be Will Smith. I said it from the moment I saw the movie on this show, like four months ago, and I stand by that. Will Smith going to win and should win. Okay, let's look at the big prize of the night. Here are the 10 movies up for best picture. This is what? This is war. This comet contains $30 trillion worth of material. What do trillions of dollars matter if we're all gonna die? Oh, no, this is we're highly rich. asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. House Atreides accepts. You are a champion in the whole world. Oh, oh, Please lay down. Can you read minds? Yes, I can. Under the right circumstances. Peter! Bill, who do you want to win, and who do you think will win in this category? Well, as I'm sitting here at Gold Derby, we have Power of the Dog at number one. Remember, it got 12 nominations, and that's a kind of a powerhouse. Number two is Belfast. We haven't talked that much about Belfast. And then three is King Richard at this point. I have to tell you, I'd be thrilled if King Richard would win. Not going to happen. What I think could happen is Belfast could win, and I'd be very happy with that. So do I want Belfast to win? I do. But do I think Power of the Dog is going to win? I do. Lisa. I think it's Power of the Dog. I really do. Uh, can is that what you want? Uh, I want Drive My Car, but let me explain why I think it's Power <laughs> of the Dog. I think Power of the Dog because Hollywood uh, yes, absolutely loves a Western, together. and Campion has made one of the best Westerns, and it really is a Western, that's come out in a very, very long time. And it gets, it has enough of an edge that it gets, that Hollywood can act like it has its cake and eating it too. Perry, want and will. My want is Coda. And I think it's possible. I think the the PGA nomination I hope you're right. and the uh, and the SAG ensemble nomination do suggest that it's got a chance. And I think that movie has a lot of support behind it. But I'm still going Power of the Dog. I don't think we're going to be in a sweep kind of situation. I think it's going to wind up with Best Picture and Best Supporting and Best Director, but then lose out on some of the other acting nominations at least. But I think this one's got a lot behind it, and it's going to power it to the win for Best Picture. Well, the two, the two that I want, I don't think are going to win. One is Coda, which you just mentioned. 
I, I love that movie. I mean, that, that movie, it, it's just this marvelous coming of age film. The pressure on this girl trying to be a, you know, a normal adolescent with all these, you know, having to help her parents who were deaf. This movie moved me. It's a wonderful film. So you like it's, Coda is a really right. nice after school special. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. It's been the way, other film, way, 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 It's not going to win. The other film I would like to see win and be happy is Licorice Pizza. Paul Thomas Anderson, to me, an incredible job of capturing the era of 1973 and this really strange romance between a kid who's a child actor and an old the girl played by uh, Alana yes, Haim. Uh, it's not going to win. <laughs> no, but I, I, I would like to Alana see that Haim. win. But Alana I'm with Haim. you. I think the power of the dog is going to win. How do you um, feel about that, Neil? Isn't that one of your favorite movies of the year? No. I, I feel like the, your choices reveal that you're stuck in adolescence. Honestly. <laughs> power of the dog is <laughs> When are you going to sell water beds yeah, in I the mean, valley? It's a coming of age story. Checks my box. I like it. Listen, <laughs> it's beautiful to look at. And um, Benedict Cumberbatch gives a great performance. Yes, he does. But they I, all I do. find the, the, the thing to be not worthy of a best picture. You mean at you all. can't do a crossword while you watch it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The story drags, and it never pulled me in, and I never really cared about the characters, nor all the right. relationship between Jesse Plemons and Kirsten Dunst's character, and I just I don't mean, care seriously, about this to whole choose. Thing. But it's gonna win. Yeah, it's gonna it, win. it is gonna <laughs> win. That's the good news here. All right, let's talk about Best Director. The nominees are Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, Rusuki Hamaguchi for Drive My Car, Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza, Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog, and Steven Spielberg for West Side Story. Lisa. You know, I actually think this is gonna be Kenneth's win. I think this is gonna be the bone that they throw uh, that movie. I don't hate it, but as I've established earlier today, I have zero patience for coming of age films right now. And I think he did excellent direction. You know, I'm not gonna cry in my beer if he wins, but who I want to win is Jane Campion. She is that rare once in a generation director to me who sees the forest and the trees. She doesn't bother to make a movie unless she really has something to say. The last film she made was 2009's Bright Star, and this was an uncanny, like expression of mastership to me. She saw the forest and the trees and p pointed the camera there and didn't move it for two and a half hours. Not at all true. Is, wow. that, who you, is that who you want in that hood? <laughs> no, Jane, I'm sorry, uh, Jane, uh, uh, Campion is gonna get it, uh, no question about it. In fact, I think that's more of a lock. I love the Brenna idea. Uh, he, it's one of my favorite movies, and I think I like Belfast more than I like Coda, and you like Coda more than you like Belfast. That's yep. all fine. Yep. Kenneth Branagh has been nominated eight times in, in seven win. different categories, I really think this and is he's this never win. won anything, and that's a huge factor going. But you're going with Campion, even. I am going with Campion. And Perry. I wouldn't mind seeing Kenneth Branagh win the win the award, but I think this is Jane Campion's award to lose at this point. Oh. I mean, speaking of front runners who have been the front runners since pretty much the beginning of this conversation, it's her. And I think ever since she's been racking up nominations that continue to point us in that direction. It would be cool if a woman won. I'm well, not going to lie. I, <laughs> I would like it. I would like it. I told you earlier in the show that there were two locks in the evening. This is the second lock. It will be Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog. Why? I couldn't tell you. Um, I think it's not uh, a coming as I don't like the movie. film. And look, if anybody deserves an Oscar for that particular film, it's the cinematographer, but not her. Who do I want? I want Paul Thomas Anderson for uh, Licorice Pizza, great story and terrific direction, right, but that's not gonna happen, it will be Jane Campion. Let's talk quickly about screenplays. Perry, let's let's start with uh, original screenplay. Original screenplay. See, this is where I think Kenneth Brown is going to get the love and he's going to get the win. I am giving the original screenplay will win to him and I feel like this is going to be one of the most controversial things that I say because I know that it's got a mixed response, but I kind of want to see Don't Look Up get this uh, award. Wow. I am someone yeah. who likes to process difficult human truths through movies, so the fact that they did this in a satirical way really just kind of spoke to me and it felt it felt like a little scary, of course, but kind of cathartic too. I thought yeah. that it was like the most condescending film of the well, year. Well, <laughs> um, that's not gonna happen. I know, <laughs> but I'm allowed to say my want. Yes, yes you is. are, she Bill McCutty. Well, I love King Richard. That would be my well, hope to win, but I think uh, actually Belfast will win. And what do you think Gonna win, Lisa. You know, I guess I'm starting to think Bronick's gonna take some home because I think he's gonna win for Belfast. It's just Hollywood's kind of movie. They love a male boomer coming of age, man. Uh, I think Licorice Pizza is gonna. May win. May I say though that I what I would have win would be worst person in the world. 
Oh, I, that's such a great movie. That I would an, love yeah. to see that. I yeah, and that love, script is what everybody's talking about. Her no, performance, of course, but I mean, no, I, I really that think it's a, that would be my favorite. And I think that honestly, if there is going to be a surprise, it would be worst person for for best. Uh, I, 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 I love this, but I, I, I love what that. But I, yeah, I, I think that Licorice Pizza is going to win. I think Belfast has a very good shot, but I think what Licorice script? Pizza. It's all people sputtering yeah. into a camera. Watch and see. Watch and see. All right, all right. Adapted screenplay, Lisa. Go ahead. Adapted screenplay, Power of the Dog. Like, and I'm happy for it. I'm happy for it. Actually, interestingly, though, the book is a lot worse than the screenplay, so they did a great job. I read the book. Perry? I'm going Power of the Dog for this one, but if I had my pick, I would give it to Coda. Pretty much consider me rooting for Coda in any category it's nominated for. Uh, yeah, I'm saying Power of the Dog also. Well, guess what? I have a surprise here. It's going to be Lost Daughter, and I think this is where Maggie Gyllenhaal is actually going to pick up an Oscar. Mm -hmm. and think about it. As good as it is, and as much as they like her and this film, they gave two of the actresses nominations, they like her directing. She doesn't have a shot there, but she wrote a really good screenplay. Well, uh, and Neil, you didn't let me say what my pick would be for a best adapted screenplay, but it would actually be Lost Daughter. How, I mean, Ferrante made an amazing book, and I always wondered how this would get adapted, and Gyllenhaal turned out to be the one to do it. Amazing. I thought you said that the worst person in the world was the thing. No, I love <laughs> it, but I think the best... It's I a think, wide open category. I think the best adapted screenplay is Lost Daughter. I mean, I am a huge fan of Ferrante, and Jill and Hall did her right. Okay, well, um, since we're talking about those particular movies, let's talk about best international film. Mm. And um, yeah. as you were saying, the worst person in the world, I would love for that to win best international film, but that's not going to happen. I think this is a pretty safe bet that Drive My Car is going to win best, best international film. It's it has loved to like because it got in both awards. categories. Yeah. It got into you don't put it in the ten best and yeah, then also right. put it in international and then have it lose in international. Totally that right. means it wasn't the best. I went back and forth on this, but I think he's right. Drive My Car is going to win. I love that movie. I think it's a once in a decade film in terms of theme and filmmaking. That said. Again, I shall not be seen crying in my beer if, if Worst Person in the World film wins because it's an unbelievably great film. I think the Best Picture nomination and also the Best Director nomination says to me that Drive My Car will win, but let's not forget that Flea got nominated in this category, Animated Feature, and then also Best Documentary. So it's got a lot behind it as well. And you know, that would be my pick for want to win because in those other categories, I have other movies that I want to win. And after all those nominations, I feel like it deserves a statue. Fair, Flea did make fair. history. And by the way, I think it should be called Drive My Car to a Better Movie. I was bored by that <laughs> oh thing. Oh my God, but I'm so again, unsurprised. I know, I'm sure I'm in the minority no, there. No, you're not. Uh, you're, and and you're that's, the majority. A, that's interesting. That's an interesting conversation we can have about Flea being animated because this is the first year that the animation category could actually give it to an adult movie instead of looking at a kid's movie that works for adults. No. This is a, a no, no, this no, is no, the no. one time no way. that no way. a real oh, all right, no. I'm just saying. Well, Flea is a very interesting film and it's a very good film, but I think that Encanto is gonna is gonna win. Um, I think it's got that Lin Manuel Miranda uh, stamp behind it and you know and he's nominated for best song he might get the EGOT you know the Emmy Grammy Oscar Tony thing they would uh, like to see that happen yeah they but I think Encanto is gonna is, is gonna win best animated film what I am gonna agree with you I, I love the movie I can't stop listening to the music and it's something I could share with my niece which always makes me extra excited mm. but the Mitchells versus the Machines <laughs> was my number. It was my number two movie of, of the 2021. Yeah. I love that film so much. I want to see them get it. win. has got this one, it, and, I, and I'm glad. Although it's not my first pick, it's a delightful exploration of intergenerational trauma. Like, how did they manage to put a discussion of intergenerational trauma to music and have it work? But that's the magic of Lin Manuel Miranda. I have to say, I would prefer for Flea to win. It, it has a chance, and if it does, I will be ecstatic. It is a groundbreaking film on so many levels. How you make a story like that through animation about the refugee story, the coming out story, and make it as beautiful and universal as you do, that is an achievement. And they love it. They nominate it in three places. Yeah. So that may split them, but who knows. Before we go, this is my favorite part of the show. We do this every year. What do you think is the biggest snub by the Academy this year? Perry, take it away, my friend. By far, Mass. It is so good, and it was deserving of nominations in many, many categories, in my opinion. But 
I think the biggest snubs of the bunch is the fact that not a single person from that cast got an acting nomination. You have four, and Dowd, Martha Plimpton, Reed Bernie, Jason Isaacs. I think every single one of them deserved a nomination, and not a single one got one. Well, and, and I don't think that will ever sit right. And Dowd is one of Hollywood's greatest treasures, honestly. I'm so good. Yeah. What's your snub, Lisa? Uh, Ruth Nega for passing. I mean, in general, I'm shocked that passing got so overlooked. That everything about that film is pitch perfect. But this is, to me, the performance of the year. It's subtle, it's stunning, and it captures an untold part of the American experience that really needed to be put on screen, and she did it with brilliance. Bill, no, 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 no. The knockdown drag out is Lady Gaga. I want her on a Vespa when they give out the Best Actress Award to come driving down with a, a cappuccino and drive right up onto the, the stage. She did the hasty pudding like razzle. That was a terrible handy This was not only is it a snub, it was the biggest surprise. No one thought she wasn't going to get nominated. So of the night, Lady Gaga, that was a big mistake. Here's two snubs. One small, one's big. Small one. Eugenio Derbez in Coda, who played the music teacher. Great performance. Snub, would have loved to have seen him get a Best Supporting Actor nomination. Whatever. The huge snub. Okay, I'm with you, Bill, but it's not just Lady Gaga. It's House of Gucci. One nomination? Are you kidding? For the Holy... And it was, that was it, the worst movie of the okay, year. First of all, oh, a, my God. Okay, it is a misunderstanding. Oh, my God. Wait. Talk about can a I, waste of funds. Can no. I speak? I don't think you can. can I, well, I, I'm going to tell you I think you lost your right to this speak. Is a completely oh, my God. <laughs> it is a completely misunderstood movie. The Gucci family is was ridiculous and Ridley Scott recognized that and made kind of made them look ridiculous. I think that the fact that Lady Gaga got snubbed, that Jared Leto got snubbed, oh. that Adam Driver got snubbed. Mm. This is one of my favorite movies of the year. It should have gotten a ton of nominations, including Lady Gaga, and that's my major snub. Well, you're not doing yourself any favors by saying all through the show you didn't like this movie, you didn't like that movie, and you're ending the show with House of Gucci. But, <laughs> but I will say you that- You all liked House Rid of Gucci, I, I loved it, but so, Ridley, there you go. Ridley Scott is the real snub here. He did the last duel, and he did this movie, and nothing for him. Yeah, That's well, good. the Oscars are on Sunday, March 27th. Check them out to see how we did. I want to thank my panel, Perry Nemiroff, Bill McCuddy, Annalisa Rossman, I'm Neil Rosen, and we'll see you next time on Talking Pictures.